Hello and welcome to the channel of Absolute Quality and today I'm giving a good old in-depth review of the Destiny 2 story and the first thing I want to address is the title. Yeah, I said it's lackluster. I'm sorry. It, don't hate me. Let let me talk. Let me, you know, bring you in on some things before you actually, you know, dislike the video or send me a mean comment cuz <laughs> I have explanations. So, first of all, it was alright. It wasn't, you know, it, it was better than the first game, obviously, because it just was, it wasn't pieced, mismatched missions together that were very confusing. Uh, there was actually, you know, there was a story. It was, Gaul took over the tower, we took it back. That was the whole story. We had to find everyone, take back the tower, and that was it. That That is the story. That's what happened. So, I'm saying it's lackluster because it was kind of easy. So... I just felt like I was always okay, like I never had to <laughs> have any challenge, I just, it was pretty easy to get through everything, there really wasn't any uh, challenge with getting anything done, like it was always easy, there was just never any challenge. Uh, next it's, okay, so the first mission, we look at the first mission, we look at the cinematics, we look at the feelings that was brought into this entire thing. So. Obviously, there's spoilers, so if you haven't played the main mission and you're watching this video, do that before you even listen to the next part, because I'm going to spoil the crap out of it. So, we start off, we come and we see the tower is under attack, right? That, for me personally, Destiny 1, being there at the tower all the time, that was like, yeah, let's go save the tower. Like, let's do that. Well... I get down there and I start doing it and that's alright, yeah, everything's fine, everything's up to gall. I've already played it so it's a little bit, you know, it's like it's kind of it's kind of boring right now because I've, I've done this already a couple times with the beta and everything. But when we get to gall, right, gall gives this speech and he shoves us straight off the tower, okay? I'm not going to get into how we survive the fall, but we survive the fall, we're really beaten up, there's really somber music going around, the city's being under attack, like, we have nothing, we can't do anything, the light's gone. That is a good mission. The first mission was a good mission. Us find, okay, so we're really weak, we're walking around really slowly, we find our ghost, he finally heals us, and we can actually kind of walk through this place again. But... You know, the ghost, you can tell he's having difficulty not having light, right? He's very, very underwhelmed at this current point. Like, he has no help. His voice is really somber. It's just, he's so sad that he has no light. He's not sad. I guess he's defeated, basically. He doesn't have any light, but, and he's telling you, hey, don't die. Like, I can't bring you back. Don't die. Please, don't die. Like, he keep, he says that a whole bunch of times. He says, I can't bring you back to life. I can only heal you. So that right there, all the way until we find Hawthorne. So from the very beginning of the game, all the way to Hawthorne, very, very good mission. I call that one mission. I don't call that more than one mission, even though it like cut scenes a little bit, but I, that's a very good mission. That mission alone, that entire period of time took me 40 minutes. That's good. That's, that's something that I was hoping to see throughout the rest of it, but it ended up being very, very mm, boring things that weren't as enjoyable as I thought they were going to be. Also, it was really short. It was super short. Like, from the time that we lost our light, it felt, and it said like four days later, and that was really nice in that mission is four days later, we're trying to, you know, find someone, and... But it seems like it only took me a week, even more. Like, it took me, like, seven days more of in-game to actually retake the tower. Like, to, to get myself back up and get back into the tower. It felt like it took me seven days. Like, a week. Of in-game time. So that out-of-game time, that's, like, four hours to, to finish the entire thing, right? And so that, it just felt way too short. There really was not a whole lot of story elements after that first thing. So what, what I'm seeing is like there, there wasn't enough gall, first of all, okay? There wasn't enough gall. There wasn't enough of the city. Gaul obviously didn't stay on his ship the entire effing time, okay? 
if Gaul raided someplace and he's on his ship, right? You attack their ship. You get into their ship. He pushes you off. He's not going to just chill on his ship with the counselor all the time. Count Dooku didn't do that in Star Wars. He flew around. He was all around. He was fighting on the battlefield. He was doing all that stuff. There were cinematic cutscenes of him. There were cinematic cutscenes of, you know, Darth Maul and Darth Vader. Like, they're, they don't... The enemy doesn't stay in one spot. And the fact that we only got to see Gaul in one single spot was not very interesting about Gaul. Like, Gaul is a big guy. Gaul could definitely be seen in the city, like, walking around with his people behind him. Like, with Cabal legionaries behind him, just walking around. And we, we got to hear that some of the people were under, you know, distress. Gaul was trying to get them to conform or something to them, right? Where was that? I wanted to see Gaul interacting with people, like throwing them aside, having legionaries hold them and take them prisoner and stuff like that. Like, that's kind of the thing you want to see the enemy do. Like, where was that enemy? The enemy I saw just sat there and talked to the trap, talked to the speaker. Like, he wasn't talking to the speaker the whole time, especially when he's like, you have a remarkably little to say. Right? The speaker obviously isn't going to indulge in all of this stuff, so why keep Gaul on the ship? talking to just the counselor like where was the counselor what was the counselor doing was he on the planet too or is he just chilling in the ship watching it's just it's it's there's a lot of missed opportunities with showing gaul as the actual enemy i didn't see any character development with gaul or a lot of the other characters hawthorne was really the only character that got like screen time hawthorne hawthorne zavala Cade and Ikora, they were the only ones that really got screen time, and it just felt like that was something that should have been a little deeper for a lot of other people, so the other people on the planet, maybe, uh, it's, it's just really, there's a lot of missed opportunities with character development, because I didn't feel like I hated Gaul at the end, I did not feel like I hated him, I hated the counselor more because he was pushing Gaul, and Gaul wanted to do something else. He wanted to actually have the Traveler choose him. I wish they would have went deeper into that, having the Traveler choose him before he went psycho nuts. But, you know, it just, there's not, a, there was a point in there where it's just that I really didn't have any feelings for any of the other characters except for my ghost, because the ghost was the only one that I had an actual connection with because I was very wounded and I could barely walk and my ghost was also very wounded and he wasn't very, talking very loud, he was very unenthusiastic. Like, that, that's the only character that I actually kind of bonded with in the beginning, but then I just lost the bond, you know, throughout the thing because the, the story wasn't driving enough. It didn't drive me. There weren't any dialogues or character developments that were any good. There wasn't any characters that needed help all the time. It was just... Zavala kind of needed help on Titan, but he, you get there and he's like, no, Guardian, just go away. And you're like, well, I have my light. And he's like, oh, okay, kill everything then. Why did I get my light so fast? Why couldn't I have actually fought around with other guard, like other NPC Guardians? There's just so many missed opportunities. So many missed opportunities with character development and story drive that... A lot of other games, even Call of Duty has. I mean, they use the stereotypical drives that they usually use, but it still works, right? Something that they've used forever still works. So that explosion where you try to save your friend, but he ends up dying, right? They use that every time. But you, somehow you get some sort of character development with them. Somehow, and then they die, and you're like, oh no. And then you kind of feel sad, but then you don't because it's Call of Duty. But... Again, very missed opportunity there with the story. Um, also, I wanted to see mission twists. So, in Destiny 1 and now in Destiny 2, the mission is the directive. You literally see what the mission says once you do. You land. The people tell you what you want to do. You go do it. And there may be a boss. Okay? Where is... Like, they could have played without your light for a while. So, you're without your light, you're, you're kind of you're getting better, 
right, you're kind of getting somewhat, your ghost is trying to figure out where the light is. So they could have stretched that on for a little bit longer. They could have put you on Earth for a little bit longer before you ended up actually finding the light. And you could have been running around trying to do stealth, like a stealth mission. I mean, those are in a lot of games. You just try to stealth around. Even in Halo, there was a room where you had to stealth through a bunch of grunts, and if you woke them up, it was like hell. Because they're all screaming, and it's it, it was kind of funny, actually, when you woke them up. But besides the point, there's always that stealth mission. There's always something that kind of brings you to make to change the gameplay a little. There was no running. Like, why can't, why can't I... Why can't I beat all the enemies? Why do I have to beat every single enemy? Why can't I, as a guardian, almost get killed again? Like, I, I want some sort of, like, life-threatening situations. So, in the Dark Below, in Destiny 1, they brought in the thing where you went in and tried to get Crota's soul, and you were down there, and then things went badly, like your invisibility ran out, everything saw you, and the only way you got out of there was of Eris Morn. She casted this giant spell and got you out. Where are those kind of twists? I, it felt like I literally landed, and I went and did this, I landed here, I went there, One of the elevator didn't work. Oh, find another elevator and go on that. Why can't I just try and go up through the building and fight? It's very, very frustrating. The way that some of these missions went, it, it's just, it was straightforward. You sit there, you go on a beeline where it shows you and you do it. Where are those, like, running away from stuff? Like, say there's a thrall army on Titan, all of a sudden, like, I, I finish, okay? I cut all the stuff off, the drills are working, but then I hear something, right? I hear this giant cackle of a witch. She's a mega witch, okay? Mega witch. She like spawns in and my ghost is like oh no we need to get out of here and then on the radio Zavala's like guardian get out of there you need to get out of there right now okay let me run and then have unending stuff spawn everywhere and I'm just like it's so difficult to get out like that would get my heart racing like I would be like oh my god I gotta run and like this witch is super powerful so even if you tried to stay and like just try to fight it for no freaking reason like you can't kill it there's no way and it also has very powerful attacks so if it hits you like you're you're basically almost done there and then there's thrall everywhere there's knights there's acolytes shooting at you there's uh, there's uh what are those called shriekers there's shriekers positioned in strategic locations so you can't run in a straight line you have to kind of go around all the cover and get around everything where is that that's a good mission. That's easy to do. All you do is set spawn points for everything, and then you just set it a mega witch up here. And then guess what? That mega witch can appear in a strike, and you can go kill the mega witch with other guardians because she's too powerful for one guardian. Where is that? There's, there's, There needs to be missions like that. And then also on Titan, there was a mission where you were able to look at... Oh, it was just very goofy. You were able to, you were going through the dark and there was nowhere to go. Like you literally, like it was so dark and you were just going in a straight line, right? There were Thrall kind of spawning every now and then. And you know, that kind of got my blood pumping because it's hard to see, right? It's in the dark. You kind of look and all of a sudden stuff spawns. And so you focus on that and you're like, is any more? Did any more spawn? There were points in there where I walked through nothing happened it was like i walked like a hundred in-game meters and nothing happened there was this hallway i had to walk through there were grates underneath me why can't a thrall pop up from the grate and like attack me like that's a that's a that'd be a nice gameplay mechanic you just walking through there and be like oh my god is something gonna pop out and something does where is that there that could have been easily put in there like come on guys I just, a whole lot of things that I really just wish happened, that the missions were so straightforward that it kind of got boring, and now I have to make new characters so that I can get all the different armors on the planets, and I just don't feel like it. <laughs> Playing those missions again because they were very, they're, they're stale now. 
a one time through is a stale. Like, it's, huh. Also, with my ghost, like, if I have to go up to something and hold X on it, it's just, it's just a waste of time, man. Like, why can't my ghost be like, oh hey, there's a door up ahead, I'll go, I'll go try and secure it, hold my position, like, defend me, and he just goes, like, you don't have to press X, you just, you just see him fly off and go to the door. Like, that would be kind of better than just, like, popping him up and then shoving him into the door. Your ghost doesn't have to stay on you. He, he sits next to you in the ship, and you're not, like, holding him in your hand when you're flying. He's above you, and he's talking to you, and you look at- you guys actually have a connection, you look at each other. Why can't he be your companion? Like in Fallout 4, you get a dog. Even though that's maybe not a very good one, because he just runs around like an idiot. And fi he finds stuff for you, but, like, this ghost, he, he really should have kind of more personality than being tr just in you. And just talking on your radio. Like, let him fly around a little bit. Let him, like, when you clear out a room, let him, like, pop out and fly around and talk to you. Don't, don't keep him suppressed the whole time. It, it's kind of, it's kind of sad just to, you know, that he's just basically a radio. The ghost is basically a radio or a door opener. That's literally all he is. And that, that kind of made me a little angry because you know he's not. Like, he is your friend. He's literally your best friend. He revived you from being dead, and you guys travel together everywhere. I should have more emotional connection to my ghost, and there should be missions that test that emotional connection, that maybe the ghost all of a sudden is freaking out, or he's he's hurt, like he's gotten transmitted somehow, some magic got him out of you, and he's over there, they're like, he's put into this thing. Why, why can't I, like, save my ghost or try and help my ghost? I don't know. This video is getting kind of long, so... Um, again, lackluster. It was point-to-point -point mission completions. The story was alright. The first mission was the best. I just felt like there should have been more development with the enemy and with friendly people. So, thank you guys for watching this video. hope you guys enjoyed. If you do have other comments go ahead and hit me down in the comment section uh this is my opinion so this you don't have to take this as uh you can take this with a grain of salt if you would like it's not i'm not trying to persuade anybody i'm just saying how i felt about this so thank you guys for watching this video hope you guys enjoyed if you did go ahead and hit the like button and if you'd like to see more content from me i'll be doing reviews about the crucible uh we're gonna do a re review about the raid um strikes and uh, the planets in general. So thank you guys for watching this video. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you later.